This is another in the first read series where I read a poem for the first time, not having seen it before and not knowing the poet or not knowing them very well. So I can't really give you any background or theory or anything like that. I just read it for the sure joy of it. Today I'm going to read this one by Lorelei Bach, who I don't know at all. Sorry, Lorelei. Uh, and there's some word for word, the long running um, internet magazine. So I pick these fairly randomly, and I always look at the form first. Um, this one, you know, if I just look at the form, it doesn't have a traditional form at all. It has the slashes in here. Pond reflecting 37. Uh, I don't know if this is part of a series or whatever it is. Um, and the lines, the stanzas aren't consistent length, so I'm just going to assume it's free verse that plays around quite a bit. And I just read these. Pond slash reflecting slash. I don't know if I just pause there, pond, reflecting. It feels almost a haiku, like a little bit, even though the words aren't, you know, aren't enough words, but it feels that kind of reflective. Pond reflecting our unapologies. So this pond is reflecting back for our unapologies, not our apologies, our lack of apologies, or our apologies that aren't apologies. I'm not sure which one it is. We crunch, devour each other, shell and all, if not you, then your frothy offspring. It's interesting here because it feels like we crunch devour each other as if we, the we, are creatures in a pond. Um, it feels very much like they're creatures in a pond, very nature-oriented, um, trying to live, exist, but they're devouring each other. But this could also just be human life, how we do this to each other, even not wanting to do it, devour each other. If not you, then your frothy offspring. So, you know, creatures do this in a, in a natural pond. Maybe humans somehow do this with their own interactions with each other. We eat. We eat, living, and dead, all trapped. Each. Well, this could be a trap in the pond. Uh, this could be human life, too. This is how we do it. And we, like, eat. And we live, and we're trapped here. Each. A poke of the wheel that turns, that turns. Now this wheel, I mean, it's hard to say what exactly this wheel is at this point. Um, you know, so it feels vaguely reminiscent of Fortuna's wheel, or something that life, life is just turning over and over and over. You're moving. Or it's going to be more cyclical as some kind of a play on, you know, the things we do in life. They just keep repeating where life itself keeps repeating. Once a fish, twice a bird. And this kind of plays on that idea of you know, reincarnation, but also in the pond, these rebirths and all these different things. So, um, you know, a frog eating an insect. A frog gets eaten, to, eaten itself, and then this just kind of cycle keeps going. Life is like that as well, too, for humans, although we don't like to see it in such a in a clear, cyclical way like this, it could be the same way. But also, you know, if you read it in terms of the reincarnated life happens the same way. It's a very short poem. I really like the connection between the pond, you know, and life for humans, if that's even there. If I'm not just reading this into it as a human, like a human style reading of a poem that's not human. Um, so fun. I'd like to see the rest of the series kind of know how that works and if it's non-human work or if it's metaphoric. Interesting little piece. Like I said, word for word, check it out.